Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Chester. Well, sir, I sure am glad to see you back. Well, it's good to be back, Chester. My, you, you've been gone over a month. That's uh, six weeks to be exact. Gracious, you sure must have covered a lot of territory. Well, I'll tell you all about it later. Uh, what's been going on here? Oh, nothing much, I guess. You know how Dodge is. Things are just about the same. They are, huh? Mm-hmm. What about that new sign over the long branch here? New sign? Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon, I plumb forgot. That happened the week you left. Sam Noonan and Kitty Russell, proprietors. Ain't that the doggonest thing you ever heard of? They're partners now, Mr. Dillon. Miss Kitty bought a half interest in the place, and her and Sam's running it together. Well, where'd Kitty get the money? Well, you know, Miss Kitty, she never spends much, and she's been saving it for years and years. I guess it mounts up. You save money that way. Yeah, you ought to go in and say hello, Mr. Dillon. Miss Kitty's been waiting real proud for you to get back. Well, I'd like to. Uh, if you'll put my horse up for me. Yeah? Sure, I will. Okay. I'll see you at the office later. All right, sir. Hello, Sam. Uh, well, Marshal Dillon, <laughs> when'd you get back? Just now. Saw your new sign outside, and I came in to see if the price of whiskey had gone up. <laughs> well, Marshal, the price of whiskey went down at the Long Branch. What? Yeah. First thing Kitty talked me into. <laughs> <laughs> well, knowing you, that must have taken some talk. <laughs> well, you know, she was right. We're making more money than ever. I sure got to hand it to her. Oh, well, good. And where is she? Well, she went to her room, Marshal. And, you know, I wish you'd go up and see her. She's... Uh... She got me worried. Oh, why? Well, we were sitting here talking business, and a boy come in with a telegram for her, and she read it, and, and well, she turned kind of pale and then got up and left. Huh. Yeah, sure, Sam. I'll go see her. <laughs> just got back. I uh, thought I'd come around and congratulate you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> um, Kitty. Huh? Sam told me about the telegram. Uh, if there's anything I can do to help. Oh, me. Matt, you got it all wrong. Sam, too. It's not bad news. Oh? Huh? <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. It's my father, Matt. What? My father, Wayne Russell. 
He's coming here to Dodge tomorrow. Well, uh, I thought your father was lost. Well, he has been. I've never even seen him. He left my mother in New Orleans a few months after I was born. Yeah, I know. He was a gambler, Matt. He worked the riverboats. Mother always said he was a very charming man. Funny thing is, she never held it against him, Mr. Zertner. She just accepted it as the way he was. In a strange sort of way, she was proud of him. Well, how do you feel about him, Kitty? Same as my mother, I guess. Hmm. He's coming tomorrow, you say, huh? Matt, will you go to the depot with me to meet him? Like I say, I'm real happy about it. But I feel kind of scared. <laughs> That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, we'd like to introduce a player piano that could have come right out of the Long Branch in Dodge City. Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. The more perfectly packed your cigarette, the more taste and mildness are released for you. Chesterfield, made by exclusive Accuray, as an open, easy draw that unlocks all the pleasure of fine tobaccos. Now, Accuray ensures an even distribution of tobacco from one end of your Chesterfield to the other. Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. He'll be on it. <laughs> now, you just keep calm, Kitty. People are starting to get off, you see? Yeah, I see. Oh, I just thought of something. <laughs> what? Well, I recognize him. I don't even know what he looks like. Matt, what'll I do? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? Ah, here comes Chester with somebody now. Oh, you think that's him? Oh, he's about the right age. Yeah. Gray hair. He's dressed mighty fancy. What'll I say to him? Maybe it isn't him at all. <laughs> Easy now, kid. Well, I, I found him, Miss Kitty. He'd come right up to me and ask if he knew you. Now, can you imagine that? So you're Kitty. Hello. Ah, uh, you're beautiful. I knew you'd be beautiful. Thank you. I know how you feel, child. We'll get acquainted. We're going to be great friends, Kitty. Well, sure. I mean, of course. Oh. Well, this is Marshal Dillon. Welcome to Dodge, Mr. Russell. Oh, thank you, Marshal. It's a pleasure to know you. Kitty, I want to meet all your friends, and I've an idea. Yeah? I'd like to give a dinner tonight. I trust there's a restaurant here that could accommodate us. Oh, there sure is, Mr. Russell, and that is a fine idea. Uh, Delmonico's, that's the best. Uh, we could go there right now and tell them to get started cooking. Chester. You're, well, I'm only trying to help. Well, that'd be pretty expensive, wouldn't it? Kitty, my child, expense doesn't matter. I own a very prosperous freighting business in New Orleans now. I've had it for some time. Well, that's wonderful. Will you invite your friends for me, Kitty? Yeah, if you want. And about how many shall I tell them to expect? Well, Chester and Matt and Doc Adams and... Oh, I don't know. Well, ain't you going to ask Sam, Miss Kitty? After all, he's your partner now. A partner? What partner, Kitty? Oh, well, it's nothing. Nothing? Why, Mr. Russell, she's half owner of the go in a saloon in Dodge, that's all. Is this true, Kitty? Well, it's really Sam Noonan's place. But you're associated with him in the saloon business? An unmarried woman has to make a living. I'm making a good one. 
Of course, of course. Well, we'll talk about all this later, Kitty. But tonight we'll celebrate. Shall we say 8 o'clock at Delmonico's? I'll see you there too, Marshal. I certainly, sir. Uh, I'll take you over to the hotel, Mr. Russell. Well, thank you, Chester. Very kind of you to put yourself out this way. Well, Kitty. So that's my father, huh? <laughs> He's quite a gentleman, isn't he? Matt? Yeah. I need a drink. Well, that was a pretty good meal, wasn't it, Mr. Like Russell? Well, and I want to thank you for recommending the place, Chester. Uh, of course, I guess it ain't like what you're used to in New Orleans. <laughs> Miss Kitty's told me about how good they eat down there, ain't you, Miss Kitty? <laughs> yeah, I guess so, Chester. Hey, what's the matter with Kitty, man? I don't know, Doc. She keeps looking at him sideways, but she sure doesn't have much to say to him. Well, I guess she's still kind of shy. Shy? <clears throat> you mean Kitty? Oh, nonsense. You better fill your glass, Doc. What's that? Sam Noonan's getting oreyed. I think he's just about to propose a toast. Oh, no, that's all we need. <coughs> now, you see what all I mean? Right, now. Gentlemen, now let's drink a toast. Uh, a toast to my new partner, Kitty Russell, and to her old man. Uh, no, I mean to her father. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Russell. And they're a very happy reunion, Sam. And many more of them forever and Sam. forever. Sam. And forever. We all are right, getting thirsty, sir. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. This is the happiest day of my life. Here's to you, Kitty. And to the Russells. The proud Russells. Oh. Hooray. Oh, hooray for everybody. <laughs> oh, my. You better lock Chester and Sam in the same cell tonight, man. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Well, I'm afraid i got to go now. Oh, come, Kitty. The evening just started. Yeah, well, it started at the Long Branch, too. I'm in business, remember? Yes, I know. I don't think Sam's going to be much help tonight. I'd better get down much there and take help, over. Kitty, I, I ain't going to be no help at all. Well, don't you worry, Sam. You stay and have a good time. Kitty, you can't go out there on the street this time of night. <laughs> well, I'll go with it, Mr. Russell. Well, if she must leave, I'll stop in later and say good night, Kitty. Good night, sir. Good night. Now, uh, Doc, keep an eye on those two, will you? Now, well, Donnie, Sam, you're going to be drinking all night. Pretty nice party, huh? <laughs> yeah, fine. Well, what is it, Kitty? Because he disapproves of your being in the saloon business? Mm, you'll get used to it, Matt. Maybe I gotta get used to having a father, that's all. Uh, you haven't made him feel very welcome. I haven't decided yet whether he's welcome or not. Well, I didn't mean to interfere, Kitty. It's no business of mine. Yep. I understand that. We'll see soon enough. Well, that's a good-looking horse Chester's riding, man. He's thinking of buying it, Doc. Buying it, Chester? <laughs> buying it. With what? That horse will be as old as Methuselah before he closes the deal. Well, that could be. Yeah, oh, uh, isn't that Kitty and her father coming out of the bank? Yeah. she treating him as cold as ever now? Yeah, it's been two weeks, and she hasn't changed a bit toward him, as far as I've noticed. Yeah, oh, oh, well, oh, she's waving to you. She wants you to come over there. Yeah, I guess so. I'll be back directly, Doc. Yeah, the sun will keep your seat warm. Okay. Morning, Marshal. Morning, Mr. Russell. Morning, Kitty. We've got some news for you, Matt. Oh, uh -huh. good news, Marshal. Matt, we've been talking to Mr. Botkin, and he'll buy my share of the Long Branch any time for cash. You mean you're thinking of selling out? Tomorrow morning, just before we leave. 
Just before you... you leave. I'm going back to New Orleans, Matt. I'm going to take my money and put it into my father's freight business there. Makes sense, Marshal. Kitty and I should be together. Besides, the saloon business is no place for a lady. I can see that now. I've had to learn a lot in the last couple of weeks, Matt. Yeah, I guess you have. Well, if you're going to get packed, you better start, Kitty. I am, right now. I'll see you at supper. Fine. I'll go over to the depot and see the Santa Fe agent about our tickets. I'm a proud man today, Marshal, a proud and happy man. Now, if you'll excuse me. Uh, Kitty. Yes, ma'am? Whose idea was this? Uh, you're selling out and all. Well, he likes to think it was both of ours. But? I'll have to give him the credit, Matt. He's been talking about it one way or another for two whole weeks now. He's awful smart. He can convince anybody of anything. Yeah, I guess he can. What is it, Matt? Don't you like him? It doesn't matter whether I like him or not, Kitty. No. No, I guess it doesn't. But, uh... I sure don't trust him, Kitty. Now we're getting somewhere. What? I'm gonna need your help, Matt. I don't trust him either. Where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your kitchen? Getting ready for Sunday supper? Maybe in your living room, relaxing. Or... Out driving? Say, be sure and watch the road. But remember, there's pleasure ahead when you smoke Chesterfield. When you satisfy yourself with Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Mr. Russell. Morning, Marshal. Well, I see the train's ready. Uh, where's Kitty? She insisted on meeting me here. She wanted to do her business at the bank alone for some reason. Well, maybe it's because that's the last time she'll be doing any business on her own. I hope so. No woman should be in business anyway. Yeah, especially Kitty. She, uh, trusts people too much. They take advantage of her. Not anymore, I can assure you. I only hope she gets here with that money. Well, nobody's likely to hold a woman up in broad daylight, Mr. Russell. <laughs> but they would at night, eh? Oh, there are some men who'll do anything for a dollar. Day or night. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there she comes. I told you she'd be all right. Nobody would bother Kitty anyway. She's awful well-liked around here, Mr. Russell. By a lot of people. Yes. Yes, of course. They uh, take it mighty personal if anything happened to her, no matter who did it, Mr. Russell. Morning, Kitty. Morning, Matt. Father. You're late, Kitty. Jane hasn't left. No, but we'd better be getting aboard. All right. Don't you have a bag of some kind? Oh, my baggage is all taken care of. Oh, I mean a handbag. You're not carrying anything. I know. Well, where's the money, Kitty? Didn't you get it? No, Father, I didn't. What? I changed my mind the last minute. What do you mean? 
I decided to leave it here in the Long Branch with Sam Noonan. It's a good investment. I can always come back for it. Now look here, Kitty. I'm deciding things for you from well, now we'll on. We'll talk about it on the train. Come no, on. no, we're not leaving till you get that money. Which is it you want, Father? Me or the money? It isn't a question of that. Now you do as I say. You haven't changed a bit. What? Mother always said you'd never change if she was right. Don't tell me you're running a freight business in New Orleans. That's enough. Easy, Mr. Russell. You stay out of this, Marshal. You're just another man to me, Father. And a crook besides. Kitty, you're going to be sorry for this. I'd be a whole lot more sorry if I let you steal my money. All right, Kitty, all right. I think he understands now. You're in this together. Mr. Russell, you played it pretty smart so far. Don't disappoint us now. You see it through. Don't make me throw you in jail. Just play it all the way, Mr. Russell. You can do it. Please, Father. Get on the train. Leave me at least that much pride. Yes, I... I think so. Goodbye, Kitty. Goodbye? Marshal. Goodbye, sir. Did it, Kitty? You were right. Sure, he did. You bet he did. All of us Russells have pride. star, William Conrad. Dad, a great guy. Chesterfield, a great gift. Get them together next Sunday, the 17th, Father's Day. You'll be giving Dad the gift that packs more pleasure. Remember, Dad prefers Chesterfield because they're mild, yet they satisfy the most. So don't forget Chesterfield's by the carton for Father's Day. You know, on the frontier, when a man was courting a woman, he usually had the good wishes of everyone. But next week, because of some marriage talk, two men nearly die. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John McIntyre and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live Modern. Smoke L&M. Live Modern. Change to L&M. Yes, have an L&M. No other cigarette you can buy, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white L&M Miracle Tip. Through the modern Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern, smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke.